I've written for clients from the music and entertainment industry, the sports industry, as well as everyday people who wish to share their stories. Writing is what I do. I wrote my first book when I was age 10, and it was obvious that I had been bitten by the writing bug at that time. All my friends would ask me to write papers for them, and I was the go-to when it came to writing. I loved writing. Unfortunately, I kind of let my love for writing die when I pursued my career in education. I just wanted to follow my normal career path. And so I stopped writing creatively, and I lost my voice. It wasn't until I took a leap of faith into entrepreneurship, and through that, I picked up my pen again and begin to really find my love for writing. A book that influenced me so heavily was written by Maya Angelou, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. And I was so in love with the way that she put words together and the way that she told the story, I was just taken aback. It was like something I had never witnessed before. And I knew then that one day I would start writing again. Every moment happening around me is a story. I can see someone walking down the street and I begin to write a story about them in my mind. And there are times when I, I want to shut it off because I cannot stop the thoughts from flowing and the noise inside of my head, but I don't want it to stop truthfully because I know that it's God working through me. I wouldn't want God to stop speaking to me creatively. So I will not stop writing until I have nothing left to say. What motivates me, what I'm passionate about, and what I feel my purpose is, all roads lead to writing. When I was, I want to say, 12 or 13, I was in the seventh grade, and my mother was involved in a domestic violence-filled relationship. And that caused me so much pain to watch her um, be in so much pain and to know that she was such a strong woman and that she was now victimized, you know, at the hands of someone else that was just terribly traumatic. And so that created a lot of um, hostility in me, I would say. And prior to that, um, I, I had had a relationship with my father, or so I thought. So I just really felt a lot of pain. And I don't think that pain is a bad thing at all. I think that we all experience pain. There's no face that doesn't have a story, and there's no face that is without pain. But it really behooves us to take that pain and turn it into something that we can be passionate about. And once we find what we're passionate about, I believe that we can find our strength and our power. Ghostwriting, I enjoy it so much. Ghostwriting for me is a time that I can truly listen to someone else's heart. Most of the time, you know, ghostwriters, we write what someone has said. We repeat the story, you give an interview, and then you, you write it in your own terms. But I remember I was always the friend that people would come to to just kind of tell their problems, non-judgmental, just an ability to provide a different outlook. And so I believe that I write what people's hearts are saying, not necessarily the words that are coming out of their mouths. And so for me, ghostwriting, it was a natural progression. I've ghostwritten uh, several books, and for several different clients, both male and female, and I found no difference in the process other than making sure that I'm listening to what it is that their heart is saying and pouring out their soul into a book for them. When I was an aspiring author, I went in search of publishing companies and information that I could find that would help me to self-publish my book. But what I realized is that there was so much information that it was hard to navigate the waters. After publishing my first two books, I wanted to create something that would help aspiring authors 
to easily transition and be able to tell their stories. And so I created 13th and Joan, a multimedia and publishing company. When I created 13th and Joan, I wanted to create a company that would represent media in many different formats. I believe that there can never be enough ways to tell our stories. My goal is to create as much media as possible. Media that feeds our souls and tells the diversity of our experiences. There's so much value in the ability to just share our stories. I will continue to create meaningful media as long as I have breath in my body and blood running through my veins. This isn't a career you retire from, it's just a way of life. Through my theatrical productions, the lipstick monologues, The Heart of a Man, my films, Consciously Beautiful, I Am Enough, and The Heart of a Man film project, I will not stop. After telling my story, and being completely transparent, I experienced an uncanny sense of freedom. And my goal became to help other people experience freedom in that same sense. In doing so, I began writing a book called The Art of Storytelling. And in that book, I started to outline the ways to self-publish a book, to tell your story, how to be able to just get past writing blocks and why every single person should not leave this earth without penning a book. Oddly enough, when I was in high school, I had a teacher who said I would never be able to be successful in college because I did not write a paper according to her outline. Today, I make a living as a writer. What I've learned is that we can never allow someone to silence our voice, and we can never allow anyone to take away our purpose. It is within. I'm so excited about the art of storytelling because it's really an encouragement and an inspirational piece that teaches you how to leave a piece of yourself with the world forever. Once it's written down on paper, no man or woman can take it away. My name is Ardrey Ori, and I am a storyteller.